Hi, my name is Michael Avery from Cadence Design Systems, and this video talks about the SVA implies property operator, not to be confused with the sequence implies operator, and we'll discuss the distinction as we go through. This is the definition in the LRM, so what this says is if property 1 passes, this implies that property 2 always passes. So this is a unidirectional relationship, not like the IFF operator on properties, which is a bidirectional relationship. If we look in the language reference manual, we'll see these defined together and very simply, there's not a lot of information here. So basically that just repeats to you what I've just said. That's all there is on implies and that's all there is on IFF. There is another video on the property IFF, IFF as it's more commonly called. What implies does is enforce this relationship, which is unidirectional. So if prop one is not true, we don't care about what prop two is doing. So that's where the lack of bidirectionality comes from. Now, the difference in these compared to the sequence implies operator is these are evaluated, these properties which are operands to implies are evaluated concurrently, i.e. in parallel at the same time. And remember that one of the things a property expression can be is a sequence expression as well. So we can have sequence implies property, for example, or sequence implies sequence. Don't confuse this with the sequence implies operator. This is the operator shown here. So if we write this, so on the left hand side, our left operand is B followed by C, a sequence, implies that this property D implies next cycle E is true. So in order for that to have passed, it takes two cycles. B and D, because they're evaluated concurrently, need to be true on the same cycle. And then C and E need to be true on the following cycle in order for that to pass. Let's see an example now. I'm going to use Jasper Gold to do this. Jasper Gold is excellent for doing this because it will find all ways in which a property can pass or fail without you having to think of the stimulus. So what we've got in this file is a module which only contains inputs. These inputs do not have drivers from anywhere else. Therefore, the tool can drive them to whatever value it chooses in order to make an assertion fail or a cover property pass. So there's no other logic in here, just properties. So this allows me to see an example of a property passing or an example of a property failing. What I can also do for two properties I think are equivalent, I can make one an assume and one an assert. And what that does, the assumption it limits how the tool can drive the wires specified inside of that property to follow the behavior of the property. So if the only way of violating an assertion is by driving them in a way that the property doesn't allow, then I found out the two properties are equivalent. Okay, so here's the examples we've got here. We've got various examples. Here we've got one sequence implies another sequence. Here we've got this sequence implies a property is passing. That's the name of the property there. And its definition is there. So B followed by C implies we have the sequence D followed by E. We also have what's showing you how not to get confused between implies and this thing here. The thing highlighted is a sequence implication operator. The thing to the left has to be a sequence. So I cannot say this. That is a syntax error if I do this because the left hand operand there is a property. That implication operator makes that property. So that's why this is hash hash one instead. This property here is not the same as this. So basically we're just saying can we just replace the word implies with this sequence implication operator? And the answer is no, we can't. That, they're not the same thing. These two properties are actually equivalent to each other, given that B, C, D, and E are just Booleans. They're just signals. OK, so let's see some examples now in Jasper. So with Jasper, when, what I can do when I load the properties in is I can set things up in such a way that I get a cover of the entire property passing. So let's look at a, one of the properties passing. So for example, this one here. Let's have a look at the source for it. This is one in property implies another, and the two property definitions are here. So the name tells you what it does. So BC, next implication, DE, FG, next implication, HIJ. So there's the definition of the properties there. So if I want to see what's an example of that passing then, I double click this cover, and here I get a waveform showing me this. So what I'll do is I'll just organize the waveforms to make it easier to understand. And here I see both properties passing. Notice they're evaluated in parallel as well. So if I were to perhaps want to show one of the properties failing. So let's say the one on the right hand side of the implies operator. I, I keep H low for these cycles. How will that affect things? So all I'm doing with wave edit is I'm adjusting my uh, cover property to see if the tool can reproduce that trace given the design and the constraints, any constraints I have. So let's replot this. Notice now, and, and what I'll do is click quiet trace. This makes the signal changes only relevant to the cover passing makes it easier to understand this example. I'll just OK that. And what's happened is it's had to extend the waveform in order to show that passing again, because I forced H to be low for those cycles. So here I can see, look, this force on H being low 
for cycles three to five. So that's the reason that it's had to extend the trace in order to do that. Now let's go and look at these two properties. B followed by C implies I have the property D implies next cycle E. And contrast that with the one where we just replace the word implies with the sequence implication operator. So that's implies good and impl implies bad. Next cycle implies good. This is uh, what I'm expecting to see. I'm expecting this to pass in two cycles. If I click quiet trace here, this minimizes transactions in order just to show the cover passing. Okay, so that's B followed by C. That's the sequence implies D. Next cycle E. So that's showing me that passing. If I were to contrast this with this one here, the one that where I place the word implies with the implication operator, I can see that is over four cycles now. B followed by C implies D followed by E. Now I'll show an example using only sequences. So if you view the source code of this one, we're, we've just got one in sequence implies another. So again, what we're really expecting is these two sequences to start at the same cycle and continue to completion. And if A, B, C, D is a ABC is observed, I should imply FGHI. So let's look at the cover. And again, I'll arrange the signals in order to make it easier to observe. And here again, we can see the two sequences are effectively operating in parallel. I hope that explains the implies operator. It's quite a useful thing, uh, and it's something you couldn't do before easily. If you're interested in the kind of test environment, you can get this from the Cadence support site. So if you go support.cadence.com, so I'll show you the front page. So from here, if you don't have an account, just register now. All you need is an email address that has your company name in it. So don't send them from gmail.com, for example. Um, and when you log in here, this is helpful for all Cadence tools. The environment we were looking at was in Jasper. It's very useful in order to understand SVA and when things pass and when they fail without having to think of what the test case should be for it to make sure you never miss anything. And if you just search for SVA test, environment click on the top hit and what you have here is that test environment that you can download there's a link to the tar file it deals with both simulation and formal in the simplest way possible in order for you to evaluate SVA expressions yourself Jasper's by far the best way to learn in my opinion because you can use things like quiet trace you can drag the actual waveforms presented to you around with using wave edit to test your theories about how the property works or not. Okay, so that concludes this video. Thank you for listening and goodbye.